Once upon a time, there lived a girl called Abomba. She lived in the land of the giants with her parents. And they were the only normal human beings living among those giants. In the land of the giants, there was no fire and they all ate their food raw. The giants were not happy that a family of humans, smaller in size, were living among them. And so they kept planning over the years on how they would kill all of them in the house and eat them up. Another reason why they were planning that was because they did not want human beings that is of not the same species with them and superiority to live among them. Abomba's parents were quite afraid of the attitude of the giants. And sometimes when they left her at home to go to the farm, one that never to come out of the house. That usually happened each time her parents went to a faraway land that was deep in the forest, deep, right deep in the heart of the forest. Abamba, on her part, always loved, respected, and obeyed her parents, and so she was always locked indoors while her parents were out of the house. She never tried to disobey her parents because she knew her family uh, life was important and her life was at stake if the giants discovered she was in the house alone. And so the giants never knew she was inside the house. One day, Abomba's parents went to the faraway farm in the heart of the forest to get some food for the family and left her at home. Unfortunately, they never came back from that journey. That made Abomba to cry because she found herself all alone without her parents in the world. It was quite sad. So, she knew immediately that her parents had been killed by the giants. Hmm. She became an orphan when she was about five years old, very small. She was very small and each night she would shut all, uh, all the doors and windows so that the giants would not realize her presence in the house and come in to kill her. In the mornings, Abomba would wake up very early before the giants woke up and go to the forest to look for what she would eat. She would rush back home and prepare her meal and eat alone. So the giants forgot about her existence and assumed she was also dead because they never set eyes on her for a long time. Every day, the giants would sit down and talk in loud tones about Abomba's parents and how they had killed them. They felt they were now at peace without any Abomba or human being listening and trying to disturb their presence in their own land. Abomba will be listening to them and crying for the creator to protect her and find solace for her. She was crying and feeling insignificant in the world. She had no one in the world and had nowhere to go to. She had been born in the giant's land and she feared the place was her homeland. One day, she heard sounds around her home and became terribly afraid. Something was going on, she thought. The giants were singing and talking in a loud voice. And then they started to sing. It continued and she began to shake. Could it be they are planning to kill me, she thought. Could it be they've known I'm around and they are scheming to burst through the door and come and take me and eat me up, she will be thinking. On the walls of the mud hut where she lived, there were tra- cracks on the wall. She went there to one of them and started peeping through the crack. She saw that the giants were clapping, singing, and dancing. Sometimes they wrestled each other, and they fell each other down. Hmm, Bomba realized it was their festival time, and there was nothing she could do than to hide and suffer hunger during the period. The giants continued the festival for nine good days before it finally came to an end. She was almost starved to death at the time because she did not keep any food to last her for that period of time at home. 
There was no time to go for food. The jazz had started the ceremony without her knowing, and the ceremonial ceremony celebration they were started very early in the morning and closed very late at night. After the festival, Abomba started to think of leaving the giant's kingdom to go and live elsewhere because she cannot continue to live in fear and danger all her life. But unfortunately, she could not come up with any solution and so continued to pray and think of what to do next. When she turned 16, she had grown to become a beautiful young girl that was hidden and obscured in her parents' home away from the world. She was now able to take better care of herself, better than before. She decided to move further into the forest each time she went out to hunt for food. She might be lucky to meet her type of people one day, she thought. So a day came, she went very far into the forest, and to her surprise, came across a hunter. It was the first time Abomba had met a human being, a human being like herself. Since she was born, apart from her parents. The young one that was also surprised to see a beautiful young girl all by herself in the forest, he introduced himself as Otondo and asked her what she could do, what she could be doing all alone in the forest. Abomba told him where she lived and also narrated everything about her late parents and herself to Otondo. The hunter was surprised and said, I cannot allow you to go back alone since you have no one there to look after you. You had better follow me back home to meet my parents. So Abomba, who had been praying for help to come to her for many years, was very happy to hear that. She readily agreed and the hunter had to leave what he had come to the forest to do to take Abomba home to meet his parents in Arula. That was how a bomba found herself living in the village of Arula with Otondo and his parents. She discovered fire was being used to cook food in Arula and stood in ill, looking at it because she had never seen fire before in her entire life. She found out it was very useful to human beings and learned how to use fire in cooking. And warming up herself. A year later, Otondo married Abomba, and within seven years, Abomba had three children for him. The, the children's name were Deri, Deri, Deri Kiakia, Taluki, and Ekiki. Deri, Deri Kiakia was a girl and the oldest of all. Taluki was a boy and next to Deri, Deri Kiakia, while Ekiki was the youngest of them. Deri Deri Kiakia loved to sing, and thus every day she would sing and sing, putting smiles on people's faces. Many people who loved to hear her sing would come to sit in their house to listen to her songs, as she sang different songs in different tones. All those things endeared her to the villagers, and it was made public that anyone could come in the evening and relax with them, and this made everyone happy. So they were all living together happily in the village. Abomba had now become a very rich woman because she had started trading on food stores in the village. She would travel to other neighboring villages to buy food stores at a cheaper price and returned home to the village to sell them at a higher price and made more profits on them. One day, her husband went hunting and never came back. Something must have happened to him in the forest and no one could find out because they were not hunters. Her husband's parents were also dead. They were very old before they died. So Abomba was left all alone to take care of the three children. One day she traveled as usual to buy goods from the neighboring villages and returned home to find the entire village on fire. All the mud holes in the village where they all lived in had been raised down by fire and the villagers could not salvage any of their properties. They did not even know how the fire came about. But by the time they came back from their various occupations, they found out that the village was on fire. A bomb and her children had nowhere to go. 
So she decided to take some of the fire that was still burning and return home to her parents' house in the land where the giants live. They arrived at the house very late at night when the giants were already asleep and snoring. A bomber sat her children down and talked to them about the giants. She warned, warned her children never to make noise or cause any problem that would make the giants to know they had come back to live in the house. They didn't want, she didn't want any of them to know that they were living there otherwise they would be killed like they killed her parents. They had to survive somehow and so she decided that every day she would be going out to other villages that far away to trade and come back home with food for them to cook and eat. So each day when she had prepared food for them, she would put the children on top of the boards that held the roof top to obscure them from being seen by the giants. But the fire in the house was never allowed to die. So that each time she returned, she would cook with it and they would eat. One day, when a bomber traveled to her business as usual, the children were all comfortable in the place their mother had kept them when Deri Deri Kakia started to sing. She could not stay silent, lonely and bored any longer. But her brothers told her, to be silent or else giants will hear her and come to kill them. The Rikiakia remembered her mother's warnings and shut her mouth. But after almost the months of continuously doing that, the Rikiakia said she was no longer going to bear it and so started to sing each time her mother traveled. Her voice was loud and clear in the air. Suddenly, the giants appeared and started searching where the voice was coming from. They found that it was from Abomba's house and they started shouting, Abomba! 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 As soon as Deri Deri Kia hear the sound of the giants and their voice and their shout, she clamped her mouth shut in fright. The giants searched everywhere but could not find anyone and so they left. It kept on happening and the two boys kept begging Deri Deri Kia Kia to stop. To avoid them being killed, but she would not listen. When their mother returned back, the boys reported her to their mother. A bomba warned the Deri Deri Kia Kia and begged her never to sing again until they found another village to move to before she could start singing again. The Deri Kia Kia agreed to what her mother said, but as soon as she left, she told her brothers that she was going to continue to sing. She said the giants would love her songs and they will not kill her or eat them. So she started to sing and sing. Her voice was clear and ringing loudly in the air. The giants all came out and this time searched for the owner of the voice. The giants stood under the ceiling listening to Deri Deri Kia's voice as she sang. When the boys noticed their presence, they begged Deri Deri Kia to stop because the giants were right there under them. But she would not listen. She kept on singing. She kept on singing and thinking the giants would love her son. The giants stretched out their hands, stretched it up into the hole, and dragged the Derekiakia down. But she was the one sitting very close to the ceiling entrance. When the Derekiakia saw their blazing eyes and huge eyes, she became afraid and started to cry. Mother, mother, she shouted. Mother, please come and save me. But no one could come out to save her. There was no human being there to save her. And her brothers were too small and frightened to come out. The giants quickly carried her out. They killed the Rikiakia and ate her. When a bomber returned home, she found that her daughter, the Rikiakia, had been killed by the giants. And she started to cry. She held her two remaining sons and said to them, My sons. You've seen what happened to your sister, Deri Deri Kia Kia. Now you know why it is good to listen and obey your parents. If you listen to your parents, you will live long and become great in life. Yes, mother, they cried. We will always obey you, mother. We have seen what has happened to Deri Deri Kia Kia, so we must always obey you. It's always good to obey your parents, Abomba said, repeatedly to her children. If Deri Deri Kia Kia, your sister, 
had listened and obeyed my orders, she would have still been alive now. This is a good lesson, example for you and others to learn from. Don't ever allow your life to be like that of Deri Deri Kia Kia. Always remember your parents love you and want the best for you. They want to see you grow to become someone great in life. That is why they always advise and want to protect you from danger and harm. Mama, the two boys chorus in unison. We will never disobey you because now we know you care and love us like no other person can. He said, crying as they looked up to their mother and remembering their sister. They clung on to their mother and felt sad at the loss of Deri Deri Kia Kia. They now understood that the words of one's parents are words of wisdom filled with fruits that will ripen in years to come. Early the next morning, before the giants woke up from sleep, Abomba took her two sons and left the giant's kingdom for an unknown destination. That is the end of the story. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.